My first corporate job right out of college was with a company called Texas Instruments. If you're not familiar with Texas Instruments, it's the company that makes the calculators that you most likely use on your math class. But they do more than that. They actually design and manufacture semiconductors, which is a computer chips that are used in everyday electronics, like your phone, for example. And I want to talk about my experience when I, was, when I went through their interview process, just to share what you can expect if that's something you are aiming to do. So I actually applied for multiple positions while I was still in college, and I failed on numerous occasions. The first rounds of interview are the typical, you submit your resume for a position, they'll call you back if you cross the resume filter, and then they'll ask you, what are you looking for the position? What interests you about the position? Basic questions, it doesn't last more than 10 minutes. And if the recruiter essentially likes you enough on the call, then they will schedule a Zoom meeting or a WebEx meeting, or a virtual meeting of some sort. And here, they will either, two things can happen. They will either tell you to prepare a project that you worked on in the past, to prepare to give a presentation on a project that you worked on in the past, that's one, or to just simply brush up on your technical knowledge, depending on the position, because you will be asked a couple of technical questions. They will usually give you a heads up regarding that. When you get to the actual meeting, they will also let you know how many managers will be on the call essentially. Typically, it'll be a technical person who's gonna be asking the questions and then the manager who most likely will be your manager if you get hired. Right off the bat, the interview is straight to the point, very technical, not really into chit chat. If it's the presentation, they will let you give your whole presentation and then at the end, they'll ask you a bunch of questions regarding the work you showed so hopefully you remember what you did because if not you're screwed and then there's a threshold really of they don't expect you to answer all of the questions if you do then you know you're doing pretty well but the expectation is to just cross the cutoff threshold to see whether or not they're going to move you into the next round that's really what they're looking for in, in this one for context i went through a total of five rounds before i got hired and it was a mix of, the, uh, I went through the whole process, the call interview, the technical interview. Once I cleared this one, I had another technical interview, but this one was in person. The recruiters actually, during the career fair, job fair at university, they showed up and they scheduled in-person interviews with anyone who had crossed the first two rounds. I happened to be one of them. And on this third round, they took all the students, it was a laboratory, and they had rows of all the recruiters and you would sit one-on-one -on -one with whoever was going to interview you. This one was pretty tough because you see everyone stressed out, struggling with, with the recruiters, asking questions. It's like, whoa, like the, the first impression, you need, really need an iron mind if you're not you know, solid in your technical background. The flow is very similar to the previous one, to the virtual meeting one. Essentially, we'll sit you down, you know, hey, how are you? They'll ask you probably one or two HR questions and then they'll jump straight into another round of technical questions. These aren't really related to any projects. These were mostly very specific to the position, again, you're, you're applying for. And it, this was, when I interviewed, the man who interviewed me was the manager of my manager or who would end up being my manager. So it was like two tiers above and he was actually in charge of the whole production line they're mostly looking for someone who not only has a solid technical background but also that they're looking for coachability and people who will fit well with the culture so this one was actually easier than the upfront technical interview through the virtual meeting essentially because i have better people skills in person than i do over camera which i'm working on but this one went pretty well i i would advise you to you know, just relax. I'm not going to say be yourself, but you have to be confident. Confidence really stands out, especially if you look at the sea of students talking to recruiters and everyone is a nervous wreck. If you are confident, that will definitely help you more than maybe answering one extra question will. Just keep that in mind. And also, don't be afraid to show off. Like, show up with a project, show up with things that people don't do. Like, literally, to stand out. Bring bring your computer and show show him some of the projects. Show them pictures of your phone. Like do something that whoa, this guy like broke the 
the norm. Don't follow the norm. You want to stand out. You got to be creative. So I'm ranting now. After you clear that round, which I cleared, they do take a while to respond to let you know how the interview went. But when they finally did, they'll call you essentially. So that's three rounds. And on the fourth one, they called me essentially to tell me that I passed and that they wanted to fly me out to their headquarters in Dallas to have on-site interviews with a lot of managers. Let's just put it that way, like five people that they just gave me a list and I saw a bunch of C-suite titles on that list. I was like, shit, I really got to prepare for this. But it was exciting because that means I cleared the third round. I was going to the on-site. They covered all the expenses. And it was actually, it was a two-day two day stint, the on-site interview. So on that day, when I flew out, first day I got to meet in person the manager who I talked to on the virtual technical meeting. I got to meet him in person, and essentially I... I was given a schedule of all the things that I had to do those during those two days and the people I would be talking to at certain times. And it was essentially I went through the whole roster. They, they showed me like, cause every, every group in the company has like different roles, different specialties. And on that interview, I went through and talked to the manager of each specialty. So that, that was pretty cool because it, it started, that's where I was starting to get more perspective as to what the actual role was going to entail. But it was, it was a heavy day because it was, imagine being like a, a normal work day, like eight hours, but you have interviews every 30 minutes, just back to back to back to back, answering questions, talking about, after a certain point, it gets boring because you are being asked the same questions. Tell me about yourself. How are you? Um, where are you from? What are you looking for when you join? What interests you? The typical, you know, cookie cutter questions. And after like the fifth or sixth, I was like, okay, like I could just recite it off the top of my head. But that's when I really started to see different, because not everyone has the same personality. And then not everyone has, how do I say this? Not everyone has the same interest in hiring you as the manager so to speak because the manager and the higher-ups are looking to essentially fill a vacancy because they need additional manpower to handle the workload but the other people i interacted with like some of the co-workers that's when you start to see you know you start to question things when you see people who really don't like being there and they just don't don't hide it they don't care or are very upfront that it's you know get ready because you're gonna hate it and you know snar snarky comments like that you start thinking but Hey, I had no job, so whatever. After like eight people, good thing is that we ended up going out to eat. They took me and the rest of the, I don't think if anyone else was interviewing back then, but they took me and the rest of the coworkers out to eat. It was a nice, nice, really nice place. We went to a Tex-Mex place called Papacitos. Super nice, super good food. And that's more of, you know, bonding with the team. At that point, I thought I was still like under probation but essentially they it's also a test to see how well you fit in with the people who are going to be your co-workers so keep that in mind if you do end up going to dinner or something similar then after dinner you know i got sent back to the hotel and on the next day the round of interviews was with all the top level managers people that you very rarely interact with if you're just you know an undergrad or starting out and i remember this one dude I can't remember, it was like the vice president of the department that I was interviewing for. And I don't know why, but he just, I just felt that he, he nitpicked every single thing about my, my resume and my, my answers to the questions. Especially, I remember he was questioning. So in Puerto Rico, computer engineering degree, the school I went to is a five year degree. And it took me six years to get my degree, mainly because we had a strike at school and I lost one whole semester because strikes are a thing in Latin country. And the second one was because we got hit by a hurricane and that was another whole semester that I lost. Fucking huge ass Hurricane Maria. I lost like five months with no electricity. So here I am arguing with this dude trying to explain to him why it took me an extra year and he just literally takes my resume, starts doing math on the back like, oh, if you average this many credits, 
per semester, you should have finished by X day, blah, blah, very logical minded, which I can understand and appreciate. But for the life of me, I could not get him to understand like, bro, I missed out like an entire year because of politics and natural disasters. What do you want me to do? So thankfully, I had read up on him a bit on night prior. I literally Googled his name and not on LinkedIn, but I found out that he had a hobby where he liked to record Indian folk music. He was Indian. And that was a hobby of his. And I found one of his CDs on the internet. And when he straight up asked me, so what else do you know? Because he started probing, what do I know about the company, yada, yada. I literally said, I know a lot about you. And I just started saying, you wrote this CD, it got published by Sony on X year. It has these many songs. You got your degree in this. I literally recited the man's whole biography to him back. And he was like, whoa, either this guy's a psycho or this guy is really well prepared. I don't know, but I got the job, just saying. But interestingly enough, that dude ended up retiring like one month after I got hired in, funny enough. So, oh, that's another thing. This whole interview process was actually an entire year before my actual first day at work, my start date. I started on September 20, 2019. And my interview, this whole interview that I described was on 2018. So it took a bit because I still had to finish my last year. So yeah, this dude was the final boss, essentially. He was the final meeting slash interview I had. And he also was the one who decided whether or not I would be hired. I didn't know that at the time. But when I joined, I remember you start talking to your coworkers and he didn't want to hire me because he was concerned. And my manager, or who ended up being my manager, vouched for me essentially saying that no they had a hurricane they had some situations that were out of their control which is why they took longer thankfully he he vouched for me and i did end up getting the position which i'm really thankful for so to summarize typically expect between four to five rounds of interviews first round is if you cross the resume filter it's always going to be a phone call just think of it like a discovery call where they'll ask you why are you why are you applying for the position what are you interested in Something to increase your chances of crossing the resume filter or at any stage of the interview funnel, you want to show off your projects. They, they specifically look for people who have done projects. If you have not worked on course projects, I strongly recommend that you do. And if not, work on some on your own time, like side projects or hobbies. But Because it's all about how you present them. Because if you position them correctly, they're not hobbies. They're actually ways in which you're developing your skill set so keep that in mind because if i could go back that would definitely help me a lot it would save me a lot of time because even if it's not for school if you can demonstrate that you worked on something to a reasonable degree and you accomplished something that is proof of your skill set that is proof of your competence so keep that in mind then phone call keep in mind the projects thing then on technical interviews you really need to study the technical interviews aren't easy. It also depends a lot on, on the interviewer. I've had mixed experiences because on, on rounds on which I just failed and they told me I didn't make it to the next round. Some interviewers are more people friendly, more charismatic. They laugh when you make a joke, which, you know, others aren't necessarily like that. So it really, it, it does depend. There's always going to be a human element to interviews. Once you cross that one and then in person, of course, just don't be a creep, don't be weird, just be, don't be a dick and don't be weird. Really, that's it. Just, you know, be confident, present what you know, believe in yourself. Then on site, also don't do stupid shit. If you made it to that point, I assume you are pretty, you know, right in the head enough to where you can manage that situation. Just don't overthink it and don't overstress it. You're there. It already means you like you cleared the previous level so that's that should reaffirm confidence in yourself that's what i'm trying to say and then in the case you meet with someone like the person i described earlier the you know that's being a bit of a hard ass you, you always gotta got to stick to to yourself always don't don't let anyone even if they don't believe in you you always have to believe in yourself that you can do the job and some basic things if they ask you if you don't if you know how to do something and you never say no if you don't know you always say that you will learn you'll figure it out but the point of that is it, it's not the magic words that's not the right answer it's the fact that you demonstrate that you are willing to move forward that you're willing to look for solutions that you're not going to just stay at the 
at the sticking point. All in all, it is a pretty long drawn out process. I can share more tips if you guys are interested, you'd have to let me know. But in general, what was the last thing? Oh, in general, the overall tip in any negotiation in life, because interviews are essentially negotiations, you always want to be operating from a position of power because a job is the real world. Like when you're in college and you're about to make the leap, you don't want to operate from a position of scarcity because then you'll probably end up taking less than what you want or less than you deserve. And I use and I don't like using the word deserve, but you never want to be desperate to get an offer, desperate to get a job, desperate for anything because scarcity repels the things you want. You want to be abundant. In life, everything happens for a reason. Uh, there's a saying in Spanish, but I can't remember it in English. I'll just say it in Spanish. En la vida todo conviene. That's the important thing to remember. In life, everything is convenient or everything that happens ends up being convenient, something like that. So keep that in mind. Position of power, always. So yeah, I hope you learned something. Hope this was insightful. I will expand on this more. If you guys are interested, just let me know. And if you made it this far, appreciate you. Thanks for watching.